Welcome back Strongman fans and subscribers new and old and this is the class of 2021 obviously for World's Strongest Man 2021 and before I get started there's a couple of things I want to talk about um, just a few people that actually withdrew very early on in the competition unfortunately there's been a, there's been a few guys that have done that and uh, also just uh, you're seeing here Big C don't worry he's uh, he's not going to win or has won this year he's just going to be presenting the award to the winner which is still pending. So very unfortunately for Graham Hicks of the UK, he had to withdraw on the 14th due to a reoccurring groin injury and he wasn't prepared to continue on and make it worse. So that's really bad luck for him. And as a result, Irvin Toots from Estonia replaced him and that obviously changed up the groups um, with Gavin Bilton, who was originally in Group 5, moving on to uh, Group one. And another fellow Brit of mine, Luke Richardson, and obviously this is only his second appearance of World's Strongest Man, unfortunately had to withdraw due to an injury he picked up in the actual loading medley, so he had to uh, withdraw early as well, so bad luck to him and commiserations, mate, and to, and to Graham as well. Also, the South African newcomer, Chris van der Lind, he had to drop out, not really sure why still, I think it was doctor's orders, but he also withdrew um, on the 16th, so unlucky for him. And lastly, as we all know, the legendary Ter Terry Hollands of the UK, uh, he's 15th World's Strongest Man appearance, um, and also had nine finals in his in his record. He decided um, after the deadlift challenge that that was it, and he has an undisclosed injury as well. And he said he's withdrawing and retiring from World's Strongest Man altogether. So I'm going to make another video on Terry um, and about his history and all that he's done. As you can see here, there's a there's a bit of a bicep problem as well. So I think that was the main thing. But um, overall. You know, great to see you through the years, and I will make enough video on that. So, anyway, moving on to the first qualifying round one, where you can see that the squat lift and the deadlift were actually split up into two and three groups, and then the loading medley was all groups. So, all 22 remaining um, athletes took part in the loading medley part. So, in first and second place, we had Maxime um, and Brian Shaw both taking four points in this event and I've done my best guys and girls to condense three days worth of qualifying um, into you know less than 30 minutes of video um, got as much footage and images as that I could use that are fair fair use and copyrights so I hope you do enjoy what I've managed to edit and put together for you it's take quite a long time um, but obviously it's what I love doing I love showing you guys um, the sport and obviously talking about it and just loving it you know and as we know in the UK we're not going to be able to watch it until December um, luckily for the guys in America they can watch it in July so you're very lucky and we're very jealous over here. So that was obviously the group one results. Um, the athletes had to load two barrels, as you can see here, um, and a 270, 275 pound anvil. And then lastly, complete a, um, an 825 pound frame carry. So uh, yeah, quite an interesting mixture here. A lot of the athletes, um, and obviously Martin Lissis also commented on the fact that to end the medley like that with the carry is quite brutal and definitely we're going to be testing and taxing a lot of the athletes grip and that did let let a lot of them down and understandably especially in that heat because as we know they've had record breaking temperatures there so it can't have been any easy for any of them especially for some of the lads who aren't from hot countries or train in hot climates like for example the UK um, and Scotland so fair play to obviously all the all the guys from the UK who've managed to uh, adjust to that. Group two saw Tom Stoltman and Mark Felix taking the first and second spot and obviously Tom winning his first event in the qualifying heat so well done Tom and obviously to Mark as well being 55 this year absolute myth you know legend in the sport you know can't believe he's still going that's what a testament to longevity and uh, the heart for, for the sport and what you can do you know later in your later years it's just amazing to see what the fact he's still up there of the best guys who are 20 years 20 plus years younger than him but anyway so obviously they took the first and second spot just to note quickly before we go on to group three only seven of the 25 men or 22 actually managed to finish the medley so it did prove to be a really tough and taxing test of strength uh, and you know in all aspects and you know fair play to them like I said again the heat just got them for group three was surprisingly Robert Obers actually won uh, and was followed by JF Caron shortly after that from Canada so I was uh, really surprised by that I'm sure a lot of other people were as well no disrespect to Robert at all um, he did actually do quite well in some of the other events later on so uh, congratulations to Rob there and uh, yeah interesting interesting um, group there obviously had Mikhail Shivlikova E4 and also Luke Richardson but like I mentioned about Luke at the beginning of the video he actually withdrew after this event due to 
to an injury and obviously we've seen the updates there. He's had an operation and whatnot and he's all been treated so he's all good. So he's in recovery stage now. Um, unlucky, for, here's Luke here. Unlucky for him. Um, but yeah, I think he he was quite hurt and obviously knew that he couldn't continue after that. So good luck with your recovery and look forward to seeing you next year. So group four, Constantine Genasia and Terry Hollands took the first and second spot. And, uh, you know, well done to Terry for, for getting second spot there. This was an interesting one. Um, you know, Constantine was quite far ahead, to be honest, at three and 7.44 meters. Terry, three and a half, or three and 5.31, and Jerry at three and 1.57 meters. So, you know, they were close, but not as close, perhaps some of the other groups that we had from the day. But well done to Constantine, because I thought he wasn't going to do that great and uh, as we'll see in the uh, the other qualifying heats uh, he actually does really well so i'm not going to spoil anything just yet lastly group five a group we can all agree that was the toughest and by far the closest in terms of each event qualifying and whatnot for these athletes as you as i mentioned gavin Bilton was moved from group five and irvin toots replaced with him um but nonetheless Kevin Fares, he took the first place spot, followed by Luke Stoltman, and Novikov did really bad in this event. Um, he actually was fourth. He only did three in 9.03 metres. Um, Kevin absolutely smashed it. He showed just how fit he is, and obviously he's the lighter guy, but he's still pretty heavy and dense, to be fair, and uh, he absolutely smashed it. He did four in just under one minute, and, uh, you know, really deserving win. Well done to Luke as well, getting four in 110.98. And Bobby here, he actually got four in 127.19. So well done, chaps. Um, disappointing, obviously, for Novikov fans. Uh, he was off. I've heard that he apparently was quite ill a few weeks before the actual competition, so he wasn't 100%. People have speculated that maybe he had COVID, and he just didn't say. Um, but nonetheless, he didn't do too well here. But Novikov, as we know, like any athlete, can come back and has other stronger events. And, you know, we all have off days anyway, so he just didn't do too good to start here. But it's the first event doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose the entire competition and not go to the finals. Again, no spoilers. I'm not going to mention it just yet because this is this is part one of two. Um, obviously, this video is purely on the qualifying three days. Um, and then I've got a separate video for the finals where I discuss actually what happens with Novikov in terms of the points because they have mixed it up significantly this year and changed it to apparently make it a lot fairer. So event two was a squat lift and as here you can see group one and group two only did this one and Avers and Brian took the first and second spot for that group. Now it was a 700 pound squat uh, event for max reps and it was actually the Canadian Jeff Caron who placed third obviously as you know last year's world's strongest man um, he actually accumulated the most reps and he got 11. Brian Shaw and Avers got 10 and then fan favorite Mikhail Shivlikova he also got 10 so pretty good event to be honest um, everyone did pretty well like I mentioned for group one we've seen the top spots there um, Ivers and Brian were matched so technically first first and second for both with Maxine after them with six reps Gavin Bilton from England got five and Travis um, from America he actually got three reps so well done chaps um, you know <laughs> I don't know many people who can, uh, who can squat 700 pounds for reps especially in that weight uh, sorry that heat so uh, really good really good uh, to see and obviously for me personally squats are my favorite exercise so i love seeing guys squatting big weight i would love to do this sort of weight but i definitely need to add more weight to my frame i think to be able to catch up to that um but you know i'm not too far off i'd say and there's a possibility that maybe one day i could catch up for them but anyway enough about me uh that was obviously the standings there and uh, we're going to move on to the second group which was group three and as i've already mentioned in that group we have jf Karam who got 11 reps, so he won overall. Uh, Mikhail Shivakova, 10 reps. E4 um, from Iceland, he got 7. Robert, Robert Oberst got no reps. And obviously Luke had to, Richardson had to withdraw due to the injury he sustained in the previous event. So we obviously didn't see what he was capable of, which is a real shame because Luke's a good squatter and uh, I believe he could have done quite well there. Um, I'm disappointed that... You know, no one was replaced, but I think because they'd already started the competition naturally, they couldn't bring someone in um, into the events because it's unfair, really. So you know, that's how it is. So group three only had four athletes opposed to five in uh, in group one, uh, I believe. Yeah, so group one with obviously Brian and such. So well done, chaps, for the reps you did. Brian, Ivers, 
Mikhail and obviously JF, uh, JF, sorry, really, really good numbers to see, especially in that weather. Okay, so the deadlift was for groups two, four, and five. And you can see here, Trey, Mitchell, and Mark Felix and Tom actually got the highest scores in group two, all with eight reps, um, which is really good. Obviously, Tom's done really well this year, improving his grip strength. And deadlifts was something that let him down last year, as you may remember. And also in the Hercules hold, he didn't do too well there. So he's obviously come, come on a long way since then to improve on his grip. And that obviously helped. So he got the eight, Mark as well, and Trey Mitchell eight. Evan Singleton got five, and Johnny Hansen from... Sweden just got three reps so obviously not as good um, but I don't think he's known for being the best deadlifter whereas people like Mark and uh, Trey are fantastic deadlifters Tom obviously is always improving still not in my opinion his best event but it's I mean at the end of the day he he was up there with the other two so you can't in any way um, write that one off I will say I don't think it was a good idea splitting the groups like this I think it's really unfair for them to be doing different events in my opinion they should do all the same events from start to finish it's, it's not really fair it definitely helps others overcome their weaknesses I'd say for England's Adam Bishop won with nine reps followed by Constantine Genesio with eight Terry Hollands took six and obviously after that we saw that he decided to uh, withdraw due to the bicep issue and also announce his retirement Jerry Pitch Pritchett surprisingly got only got five and Chris van der Lin from South Africa only got four and as I mentioned again at the beginning of the video Chris actually withdrew due to um, obviously health reasons and we wasn't told why that was but um, I hope you're okay Chris and also good luck to Terry like I mentioned in the early part of the video Jerry um, I've heard does have a few issues a few a few little injuries and some owies and I think that definitely affects him because as we know Jerry is one of the be best deadlifters in the world so he could have done a lot better, but perhaps he was trying to save his energy um, for other events um, and not, not wipe his back out and energy. But nonetheless, he, he didn't do too bad. He wasn't bottom, obviously, so you know, it could be worse, um, but not what we're used to seeing. But, you know, congratulations, Adam. Adam's done fantastic to, to go up like this in terms of his deadlift um, to win the event. So that's his first actual event for his group that he won and uh, yeah that was great to see for him and again Constantine as we know Constantine used to have a record as well 400 kilo for rep so wasn't surprising for him so for group five Bobby Thompson the newcomer well second time actually uh, to World Strongest Man he won the uh, event with nine reps followed by Kevin Fairs Novikov and Stoltman all getting six so we were surprised well I was surprised sorry that Novikov didn't actually do better as we know he won the world's strongest man record last year for the partial deadlift um but he was definitely off this you know that day he wasn't doing as well as expected Irvin Toots here obviously the replacement for uh, Graham Hicks he only got three so that was a bit of a disappointment to see um but I don't think he's great at deadlifts personally he's better in some other events and again he wasn't fully prepared for this because he, he might have had a chance to be there and he did get his chance and obviously he was training for it but he always knew in the back of his mind it might not happen so perhaps he never was as hardcore for it but um well done bobby you know it's uh he's definitely shown that he is someone to be scared of so that was the first events for the first day. Then on to the second day, we had Fingles Fingers, which had three groups, and then the train pull with another two groups. Okay, so I've covered uh, train push first, and the winner of that was Johnny Hansen from Sweden, and Trey Mitchell followed him in second. And the reason why I've done this one first, because there was only two groups in this one. And just want to mention a few things. It was originally meant to be a train pull, and uh, Hansen actually really went for it and really tried to pull it, but they later found out that the heat had caused the brakes to seize up and they couldn't actually move it. So you know, no matter how strong you were, that train was not moving. So a bit of a waste of time for him and energy and looked quite amateur for World Strongest Man, to be honest. But nonetheless, they decided to switch it. And as a result, they detached um, from the body the train and then had to push it as quick as possible for 20 meters and like i mentioned johnny hansen came first uh with 35.36 seconds trey mitchell followed closely 36.31 tom got 37 evan uh, was full for 39 and mark fitz came last with 42.58 so well done chaps um it's a shame it wasn't able to go how it's meant to with the pool um but obviously i think for the guys at well strong's man to learn and hopefully they won't just try to write it off as just purely based on the fact that it was the heat and whatnot because the influence need to be tested and good to go because for people like hanston hanson sorry took it well but i would have been really pissed off if i was him because you know it's just not fair especially to go first
So Group 3 only had three competitors because of the changes to people withdrawing. E4 uh, from Iceland took first and Robert actually took second, surprisingly again. So well done, Robert. Uh, followed by JF Caron and lastly, Mikhail Shiftakova. So E4 got a great time of 37 on the dot, uh, 37 seconds. Uh, Robert, 37.53. JF was 41.19. And uh, Mikhail got 44.12. So really good times, guys. And this was uh, an interesting one to see. You know, remember this this train weighed a lot. Um, it was a crazy amount. The actual numbers, 20 on. tons. So definitely no light work. So lastly, we're moving on to the Fingles Fingers and Group 1. And as you can see here, Brian and Ivas actually took the first and second spot. Followed by Travis, uh, Maxime, and then lastly, Gavin. So all chaps apart from uh, Brian got four. And Brian actually got all five um, in a time of 40.47 seconds. And Brian has actually, you know, scored the fastest time in history already before flipping five fingers in a time of 45.93. Um, the last time we saw Fingles Fingers, by the way, was in 2017. So, and that's obviously when... Brian um, got that record and he's repeated history again by flipping all five again. Each finger uh, went up in weight, so it started at 320 pounds, then 340, 350, 360, and then lastly, a 380 pound finger finger. So yeah, silly numbers. Um, they weren't allowed to have rest it on their shoulder, by the way, this time. So that was a class of cheating. So it was purely based on their hand placement, keeping it on the palms and the fingers. As the event says, there was no shoulder um, shoulders involved. So they couldn't thrust it up like that and rest it there. So if they did, they had to reset and go again. So in group four, we had Jerry Pritchett, Constantine and Adam. So a significantly smaller group with only three athletes at this point. And Jerry actually obviously won. As you can see, he got four fingers in a time of 41.19. Constantine got three in 26.48. And lastly, Adam got just three in 27.21. So... Not an amazing uh, group here, to be honest. Um, I think Adam could have done a bit better, um, you know, but nonetheless, didn't really matter. There wasn't much competition between the two of them. Adam, uh, sorry, not Adam. Jerry had to get on his own because obviously there's only three. So fair play to him to go out on his own. No one to really go up against and still winning that event. So well done to him. Um, he definitely is a grafter. Um, but I was a bit disappointed in the numbers from the other two. But nonetheless, they did what they needed and, uh, you know, got through. Chris, who was meant to compete, didn't because obviously he withdrew. So it's a shame because it basically made it even harder for Group 5 and easier, in my opinion, for groups like this because there's less and less competition, whereas Group 5 was so, so tight in terms of everyone's ability and the fact that all five athletes were there, I think it just got worse and worse. And, you know, I know the event organisers can't plan for people withdrawing, but it definitely seemed, in my opinion, a bit unfair that you've got groups like this of only three, whereas Group 5, you know, it's just everyone was smashing it in great times and great um, great numbers in different events. And if it had been in any other group, they would have won that group. So, in my opinion, again, that wasn't fair. But it is what it is, and that's how they do these things. But hopefully there might be... A, diff a change for that next year because I think some people got slightly robbed. Okay, lastly, Group 5 again. So Novikov actually won this event. It was his first event he won of the day. He got four fingers in a time of 28.44, followed by Luke Stoltman with four as well um, at 28.92. Bobby came third. He got four in a time of 36.25, uh, followed by Kevin Fares quite closely with four fingers at 36.31. And lastly, Irvin Toots, only managed three with a time of 29.44. So it's pretty obvious to see that Irvin wasn't doing amazingly in uh, in the events and you know, needs to say that's why he didn't go through. But I'm not discounting him in any way. He's still relatively new to the sport. He's got a long way to go and needs to learn and develop still. But he's got someone like Rauno Heiner on his side, so I'm pretty sure next year and the year after we'll hopefully be seeing some better things for him but um, in terms of the guys actually won you know Novikov and Stoltman well done um, good numbers good times and you know you can see just how close everyone was at nipping each other's at heels and like I mentioned before if even just one or two of these guys had been moved to another group they would have won those groups probably so it's a real shame that they had such you know, it was so close for each one, but it definitely made it more of an exciting group to watch and, and not as predictable and as boring. So that's always a good thing to see. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the full um, actual heats myself, because as you can see here, I've got as much footage and um, stills as I can to show you. But it obviously doesn't beat the final edit. But 
I'll be honest, it would have been even better to be there. And it was lovely to see. You can always hear the crowd going mad. And that definitely made a difference for the athletes this year. Because last year in Florida, I mean, you know, they didn't have it easy at all. They were stuck indoors most of the time. The hurricanes, no fans. COVID was obviously more prevalent. A scarier time. Not as fun. Not as enjoyable. Yes, it's really hot. Yes, it wasn't very comfortable. People have drew, but they had a closer well strongest man to what they've had in previous years pre-covid so those are the numbers there well done to Novikov for winning your first event there and to Luke and obviously we're seeing here now that it kind of started to become between Novikov and Luke and then Kevin Fairs also starts to come through in the future the future events which we'll discuss shortly um, as, a, as a great contender to get into those finals so well done again Novikov and again to Luke Stolp and all the athlete, athletes for this uh, heat. So after day two, he, these are the standings for in terms of the points. As you can see, group one, Brian and Maxime at the top. Group two, we had Tom and Mark Felix at the top. Then we move on to group three in through the three events. We've got JF Caron and E4 from obviously Iceland. Um, Robert Obos not far behind though, we're only one point difference. And then group four, we have Constantine uh, and Jerry Pritchett at the top, uh, followed by Adam Bishop quite closely again with Jerry, with only one point difference. And then lastly, Luke Stoltman and Bobby Thompson tied at the top um, in group five with Novikov just one point behind Bobby Thompson. But Kevin Fairs also had the same score. So lastly, round three on the final day with the overhead medley, the pickaxe hold, which was both groups of those two, and lastly the stone off for the final two to go through. So for group one, we had Brian Shaw and Maxine. They came first in the overhead medley. Then in group two, you had Trey Mitchell and Evan Singleton. They took the first and second spot. And and in terms of Group 3, we had J.F. Caron and Mikhail Shiflakova that also took the first and second spots there. In Group 4, we had Adam Bishop and Constantine Janasia in the first and second spot. And then lastly, for Group 5, at the top, we had Alexei Novikov, so a second event win, followed by Luke Stoltman. So you can see, again, these two starting to really go head-to-head -head against one another to get that qualifying um, position. They did not want to go to the stone-off, that's a fact. So the medley consisted of one uh, dumbbell, which was 95 kilos or 210 pounds followed by another single one at 100 kilos or 220 pounds. Then they had to press a circus barbell for 155 kilos or 342 pounds. And lastly, they had to press an axle barbell, which weighed 163 kilos or 360 pounds. Now, it was only for one rep and it was to be done as fast as possible. Um, you know, so transition was, was key as well as skill and technique. It's not always about strength, especially with those heavy dumbbells. You know, they weigh as much as a heavy person. I myself weigh 100 kilos. So, you know, they're pressing me with one arm. So it's no easy technical thing to do. Um, so you really got to make sure you're not off at all. As we know, the Stolt Stoltman brothers are really good at pressing, as is Bobby Thompson and uh, Robert Oberst. So Robert obviously used to hold an American log, log lift record. Um, and Bobby's got the new one. He obviously beat Rob Kearney. And Luke has the British uh, record. So we've got some great pressers in this uh, this event and we know we wasn't disappointed with what everyone did. So as I mentioned, we had Brian who got four reps and Maxime, he got four reps. So they, they took first and second in the second group. Group two, we had a four for Trey and four for Evan in first and second. Group three, J.F. Caron, he got four, and Mikhail got four reps as well. And lastly, sorry, uh, group four, we had three reps from Adam Bishop, and Constantine got three, first and second spot. And then lastly, Novikov got four, and Luke Stoltman got four as well. And uh, in terms of the times, Novikov uh, did it in 24.83, and Luke in 25.63, so very close indeed. And again, like I said, those two were really fighting to get that automatic um, qualification to the finals and not having to go to the stone off so well done to Novikov, um, Adam, JF, Trey and Brian for all getting the uh, the first place spot in your groups for this event and uh, it was great to see you lifting and all, all pressing such heavy weights because it's just crazy you know um, especially the dumbbells for me I have such respect for, for pressing weight like that um, 
you know, 50 kilos for most people would be, would be seen as an amazing feat of strength. But to do double that, it's just, we're just talking another level. And uh, everything in general, you know, to go from one to the other, it just shows their level of fitness. You know, there's so much more going on apart from just static strength. And again, in the heat, it was another sensationally hot day from what I was from what I read and what I saw and heard. So uh, the fact they managed to con condition themselves and, and work around that was uh, was very admirable and very impressive. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely rate these chaps for the fact they could do that in such difficult um, circumstances. So very f four very heavy implements. Everyone did it, uh, all four, apart from uh, obviously Adam, who got three reps, Travis, who got one, um, Johnny Hansen only got three, Mark got one, sorry, um, and I believe Jerry Pritchard got no reps actually, Irvin Toots got two. So not everyone got all four, but the majority of them did. Constantine also only got three, just to add that, by the way, guys and girls. Um, but well done to all the chaps uh, for completing the event um, and even more importantly staying injury free um not getting sick because of heat exhaustion or dehydration and generally just staying alive so well done so uh then we led went on to the second event which was the pickaxe hold and this is group two so trey mitchell uh took first spot followed by mark felix in group three we had robert oberst he won um and e4 came second from iceland so well done robert again another event that he won uh, in group four we had jerry pritchett taking the first spot followed by constantine janasia adam bishop as you can see was at the bottom and then lastly, in group five, we had Novikov again, followed by Stoltman, uh, Luke Stoltman. So Novikov winning his third event of the day. This was the fourth and final event of the day before the stone off. And what athletes had to do, they had to stand against a pillar holding a 60 pound pickaxe with their arms stretched out for as long as possible, held at shoulder height. And as I mentioned, for each group, we had... Um, Avers in the first spot with a time of 32.51. That was group one. Group two, Trey Mitchell. He took, obviously, 46.13. Then we had in group three, a Robert Obers, 48.03. Group four, Jerry Pritch uh, Pritchett, 35.39. And group five, we had Bobby Thompson at 41.62. And as you can see here, we've got the results for each, each person from each group going through um, for the events that they've done from all three days thus far. So you can see the points come up there. Constantine obviously there at the top spot and Trey Mitchell at the top there, funny enough, um, for the end of day three. So he qualified automatically. The Q stands for that and the SO stands for the stone off, by the way. Spots available came down to the stone off. Obviously the top man from each group went straight through, but the second and third place finishers had to go for the head to head. So they had to lift an at the stone back to back, back and forth until no one could not, no longer lift. And the final stone weighed 465 pounds. I believe the first one weighed 140 kilos and I think it went up from that. So in group one, we had Maxine versus Ivers. Group two, we had Tom versus Mark Felix. Group three is Robert versus E4. Group four is Adam versus Jerry. And lastly, group five, we had Kevin versus Luke. So I have as a Maxime with the first to go head to head and it was actually, as you can see here, Maxime that went through the Canadian as he was able to lift the sixth stone, whereas Ivers was unable to do so. Obviously, Luke managed to go through as well. He actually beat uh, the American Kevin Fares. Both athletes scored clean lift to sixth stone and you know neither of them showed that they were weakening. Um, but unfortunately for Kevin, it was Tom, uh, sorry, not Tom, Luke, who managed to beat him when Kevin failed on his third attempt. So unfortunately for Kevin, he didn't get through. I do think he should have done if he'd been in another group because he did fantastic throughout all three days and absolutely showed how good he is and what great potential. So unlucky, mate. Was unlucky against Bishop. You know, he's nursing that hip injury halfway through most of the days. And as a result, he wasn't able to get that third stone in time before that whistle went. And as a result, Bishop went through. So unlucky, Brugeri. Well done, Adam. Actually, for Mark Felix, despite being, you know, 55, an absolute legend, he went up against the best stone lifter in the world, Tom Stoltman, who's got the current record for 630 pounds. So it was pretty obvious who was going to do well on the day. Both men did lift the first five stones, but Felix couldn't get that sixth one. 
and then that was it. So unlucky, Mark. Real shame. If you've been again in a different group, perhaps things might be different. Um, but well done, Tom. And that was obviously great to see you go through like you deserve for the finals. So that's my recap for the first three qualifying days, guys and girls. I hope you liked the video. If you did, remember, as always, to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And let me know your comments in the section below what you think about the first three days and how the groups were put together and, and who, who, in your opinion, deserved to be there and who do you think missed out. Let me know what you think. And there will be... Uh, the results video coming shortly obviously as i'm speaking right now i'm waiting for the results to be announced and then i can put together the rest of the video for the two final days which is going to be very exciting so let me know your predictions for who you think is going to win personally for me as it's standing i think now we're looking at brian tom and luke so anyway guys take care and i'll see you soon amigo and finis signing out